The Legend of Zelda is one of my favorite series of all time. It's among the first games I ever played and where some of my fondest memories in life come from. Zelda titles have such a beautiful balance of engaging combat, clever puzzle solving, and unique designs for locations and characters. And one aspect where I think they stand out the most is in the depictions of towns. Many games feature towns or places akin to towns like markets and settlements, locations where the player can purchase items, gather information, and initiate quests. But I always felt the strongest connection to the ones from The Legend of Zelda, simply because they put such a large emphasis on being cozy, embodying it so much that when I even think of that word, images of all these towns instantly appear in my head. I'd like to take you on a tour through these towns to show you how they achieve such a level of coziness, and then at the end, I'd like to theorize about why Nintendo finds them so important that they include them in every single game in the series. That there isn't just a gameplay reason, but perhaps another, one that can even touch the hearts of players in ways no other games can. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider dropping a like, subscribing, or perhaps even supporting me on Patreon. For just $1 a month, you get credited at the end and can watch videos one week earlier than everyone else. In fact, this video was even voted for by some of my lovely patrons. So if you'd like to have a little bit of control over the content I make, consider dropping me a buck over there. Anyway, let's dive in, shall we? We begin this journey with a brief excursion into the history of Townsend Zelda games. I believe it's necessary for answering the question of why they reappear so often throughout the series in the ways that they do. The very first title of the NES stands out amongst all the others because it lacks any sort of town, village or even houses. Instead, the player can find random cave entrances throughout the land, some of them even being hidden via fake walls or underneath bushes. Their appearance and the way Link enters them hardly differs from the regular dungeons, being dark, dank caverns with only two torches casting light on the few objects in the room. And yet, they lack any and all sorts of monsters, meaning that these are some of the only places in the game where Link is truly safe from all danger. Well, unless he decides to attack the owners. It was only with Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link, that towns were truly realized. Entering one of these shifts the game from the top-down perspective of the overworld into the 2D platformer one seen in the game's temples and battle encounters. This gives the player much more freedom in exploring them, going from left to right and even climbing on top of the houses. They're once again safe from enemies, mostly, and the music and calmly wandering tones full create a pleasant and relaxed atmosphere. Surprisingly, Nintendo opted to not feature any currency in the game, so shops are non-existent. The player can, however, receive free aid to restore their magic and health meter by following beautiful ladies into the houses to, you know, eat. But with this title, a spark had been created in the minds of the developers, one that just wouldn't go out. And it grew into a bigger flame with each new entry in the series. Towns were not just a gameplay element anymore, but a core aspect of The Legend of Zelda. The sequel, A Link to the Past, revisited that idea eagerly and combined the best aspects of both games. The player was now able to visit a peaceful location and purchase items there. However, they weren't completely free of threats, as possessed soldiers tried to hunt them down in them, violating their sense of security. But with the first 3D entry, Ocarina of Time, was when players received the first real form of a town. Not just one, but two whole locations offered brief intermissions during your travels. And considering the game's influence over the series, it's no wonder that this was the template for towns that the other titles would follow as well. The Cozy Town was now as ubiquitous with Zelda as dungeons, boss battles, and the overworld in general, and wouldn't ever leave its side. So then, how do these games implement this idea? Before we can answer that question, I have to ask, what exactly does Cozy mean? Really? You need me to explain to you what Cozy is? Go lie in a loved one's arms for a while, read a book while it's raining outside, spend some time with a friend just blazing about, relax after a hard day with a hot bath, or just warm yourself by a campfire. You know what cozy means. It's feeling safe and secure even though the world is going crazy around you, knowing you can be yourself without worrying about what others might think. Not wondering about the past nor future, just wishing that this moment, right now, would last forever. Well, damn me, I explained it after all. Knowing this then, how do towns in The Legend of Zelda achieve this feeling of coziness? I believe they do it via six distinct aspects. Atmosphere, rewards, intimacy, characters, side quests, and realism. Or as a handy acronym, Eryxgr. I'll be explaining these aspects using one town from a certain Zelda game for each. 
Almost all of them apply to all entries in the series, but these examples are ones where I believe they truly excel. Let's begin with the atmosphere. This is referring to both the visuals and music, and where I believe the most obvious characteristics stand out. The game that demonstrates this the most is, I believe, the Minish Cap with its Hyrule Town. If I had to describe it in one word, it'd be joyful. Thick stone walls surround the town, firmly securing everyone within. Colorful roofs stand out against the intensely vibrant green grass and feel almost like an extension of the vast amounts of flowers planted everywhere. The inhabitants go about their day, wandering the market square in front of their houses, with a postman running errands and schoolchildren frolicking on the playground. And all that life is accompanied by a piece of music that really highlights it, as if the notes themselves are laughing alongside everyone else. <laughs> It's the single most pleasant town atmosphere out of any Zelda game, and it really makes me feel like a kid each time I explore it. You're even able to witness it up close by shrinking down to the size of a mouse to walk on the house's rafters, climb up bookshelves, and stroll over tables. It really gets the point across that everything in this town is alright, that not even the princess being turned to cold stone could put a scratch into the pure happiness that this place exudes. This atmosphere creates a big contrast to the rest of the game, like the large, monster-filled overworld with its bombastic, epic orchestra, or the gloomy dungeons with their foreboding, almost sinister music. It shows the towns are a safe space for you, and that nothing can go wrong there, no matter how much evil tries. The next aspect is rewards. What I mean by that is that in towns, you have plenty of opportunities to spend your hard-earned rupees on items and to try your luck at minigames. Sure, you can do the same in the overworld, but they're all condensed into a single location here. I think the game that fits this concept the best is Ocarina of Time. It's hard not to showcase it, considering it basically pioneered these ideas, taking what was established before, but streamlining it. And so, even the first location you start the game in, Kokiri Forest, features a shop for you to buy items in, to show you what to expect later on. But especially Castletown takes it to the next level, featuring a large array of shops. A bazaar for general items, specific stores for potions, bombs and even masks, as well as the galleries for bomb bowling and bow shooting, and even a place to gamble on treasure chests. Coming from the calm, lonely serenity of Kokiri Forest to such a bustling plaza is like experiencing a major mall for the first time in your life and simply being overwhelmed by all the possibilities. Feeling like a kid in a toy store, marveling at all the exciting new things to buy and try out. This really helps connect these towns with positive feelings, because you're not just safe from danger there, but also get rewarded with shiny new trinkets and fun distractions, like every day is Christmas and your birthday combined. The next aspect, intimacy, is essentially an inverse of what I talked about in my video about the city levels from Dune 2. To quote myself, Cities are massive, almost incomprehensibly large. These levels truly capture that experience of going to a major city for the first time in your life and simply being at awe and wanting to explore everything, while simultaneously not knowing where to start and even not wanting to go anywhere out of fear of getting lost. But here, even despite all the overwhelming rewards I just mentioned, the player doesn't feel confused or like they're lacking direction. Instead, Zelda's towns are straightforward and easy to understand. Why is that? Because their layouts are intentionally being kept small and simple. There's only one shop for each type of item, as demonstrated earlier, as well as only one building where each person can be found, without any duplicates or inconsistencies. There's no butcher's shop and then two houses down the road another, the successful butcher's shop that's close half the time. No, everything's always accessible and available, and everything that's not absolutely necessary simply doesn't exist, like side alleys that don't lead anywhere important or close off buildings. This makes it incredibly easy to remember where everyone and everything is located at all times, which comes in handy for the side quests later on. I think the game that exemplifies this the best is Ordon Village from Twilight Princess. And the reason for that is because you spend a lot of time in the beginning there, just wandering about, talking to people, doing chores for them, playing with your friends, and spending time with your love interest. It might be a drag for repeated playthroughs, similar to the intro from Half-Life, but much like that game, it does an absolutely marvelous job at conveying a certain mood. And that mood is feeling like you've lived in that place your entire life, even though you've only spent a few in-game days there. You know exactly where each character is without ever having to look it up on a map, simply because you have to visit each one, sometimes even more than once. 
It's such a small village, not nearly big enough to be compared to some of the other towns in the series, but it feels so much bigger because you got to be so intimate with its layout. And because of that simplicity and intimacy, I really grew attached to the place and actually cared about the stakes when some of that security was being torn apart once my friends were taken away. It really goes to show that by doing less, you can often achieve a lot more. And while we're on the subject of characters, this brings me to my next point. Uh, characters. These are among the most important aspects of Zelda games, with almost every single person having a unique design, name, and often even personality to really make them stand out from the rest. This leads to even more rewards, because just being around people you care about can give you some pretty good feelings, especially if they have funny dialogue or are just interesting to talk to in general. I think Skyward Sword demonstrates this the best. Everyone in Skyloft feels like a friend or family member to you, much like in Twilight Princess. Well, with the exception of Colin, at least Gru's redeemed himself early on. But everyone at the Night Academy is just so darn pleasant, with the teachers even being fully understanding of the fact your Loftwing is gone and willing to hold the final exam until you can get him back. One of the best examples is probably Zelda, whose sheer kindness, sweetness and ability to stand up for herself and others make her one of the best Zeldas in the entire franchise, right after Spirit Track Zelda. But I'd be lying if I said she was my favorite character in the game and the reason why I chose it for this category. No, there's one other girl that I absolutely adore in every way. Petrus. She's genuinely one of my all-time favorite video game characters, period, just because of how sweet and adorable she is. Initially, she starts out bored at a job and pretty dismissive of you. But over time, that attitude fades in favor of a kinder one when she warms up to you and gets excited to see you again, until eventually even falling in love with you. Already, this is pretty rare for Zelda games, having a character build a relationship to the player and reacting to their actions over time. It doesn't just add personality, but makes people feel like they're achieving something, like they're a part of someone's life. And if it ended there, it'd be a neat side story, but luckily it doesn't. Not only does she confess her love to you, but you can actually confess your love to her, openly and without any implications, and never is it downplayed or subverted. No, this marks the first time in history that a Link officially and undeniably receives a girlfriend and it's not even with a Zelda or plot relevant character whatsoever. For a game that copied the previous entries in the series almost verbatim, this is an incredible change of pace. It genuinely makes me happy because I really enjoy seeing these two together. And because I'd known about this before even playing, I made sure to stop by regularly just to chat with her, even after we had already confessed our love to each other. It really made me feel connected to this fictional character, and this is a quality that can only be achieved in Zelda's towns. You know where all these people reside, what their lives are, and like you've known them since you were born into this world. It makes these towns feel alive, like they're real places that actually exist somewhere for you to visit, rather than just being the dedicated video gamey buying items and quest gathering place. And most importantly, it makes you feel like you're just as much a part of their lives as they are a part of yours. The next aspect is very closely connected to this one, the side quests. And what game could I choose for this one but Majora's Mask, the undisputed champion of side quests in Zelda. Much like Skyward Sword, it too features characters that appear so grounded and lifelike due to their own strengths and weaknesses, as if they're people you've known your whole life. But they wouldn't feel so real were it not for the side quests connected to them, most of those being located in the game's clock town. There are far too many to point out, and I do go more in depth about this in my video How Majora's Mask Weaponizes Negative Emotions, so if you're interested, check that one out. For now, I'll just briefly go over a few of them. The most famous one is the Anju at Cafe quest, where you help two lost lovers find each other again over several anguish-filled and anxiety-inducing days. But you can also come to the rescue of two dancers by giving them a dance for the festival they really needed. Or maybe even giving the postman a chance to finally leave town on his own terms, which he so desperately wanted, even if it interfered with his own duties. And you can even get the stubborn carpenter leader to confront himself for just a moment and question how his wife is doing. And much like these people feel real due to their quests, these quests themselves receive a lot of gravitas by being connected to such wonderful characters. If you weren't such an important part of their lives, it wouldn't feel so rewarding to help them, and vice versa. It makes Clocktown feel so lively, even despite the looming threat of annihilation above, that these characters have their own problems that you can offer to help them with, and by doing so, become a part of the town just as much as they are, instead of merely being a stranger passing through. 
And finally, the last aspect, realism. The Legend of Zelda may be a fantastical series, but as I've just shown, that doesn't mean it can't be grounded in reality at times. And no game in the series does this better than Breath of the Wild, and I guess Tears of the Kingdom when that comes out. This one has to be the absolute king of cozy towns out of all the others, since every single one, without any exception, is cozy. Even the random stables you can come across on your travels are so pleasant that I'd really love to live there myself. And the reason for that is that in these towns, you can do anything. All the things I've described and more. You can enter all buildings, talk to everyone, buy items, play games, cook food, do side quests and just vibe. Take a walk through the neighborhood. Sit by the fire as sun falls. Do whatever you want. Hateno Village even has a house you can purchase and decorate yourself, truly making you a part of the town like everyone else. Tari Town takes it a step further since you help build it from the ground up by doing quests. And if you could buy a house there as well, it'd be truly perfect. My favorite has to be Gerudo Town since it just feels so warm and inviting with not a single house having a door, allowing you to stroll right in and make yourself at home. I genuinely love to live there and not just because of the giant pretty ladies. But I feel the most important aspects of them are the most intimate. The fact you can eat and sleep there. You can do the same in previous Zelda games as well, but never to the same extent as it's done here. I find it extremely important to include these small acts too, even if they're completely optional and don't affect the main quest in any way. Because while they're small, they're a part of everyone's lives and are most relatable because of that. It makes you feel even more connected to the fictional people living there because just like them, you too have your own wants and needs and the towns are there to fulfill them for you. I believe this is the cherry on top of the cake, the final piece to really make these towns feel so cozy. So, why does Nintendo feel this urge to have these towns in their games? Well, it's what I hinted at in the beginning. To offer respite from adventures, give you a pause and just let you forget the world for a little. Zelda games are synonymous with adventure and be courageous enough to risk your life against all dangers. But no matter how tough you are, no matter how strong you are, everyone needs a break sometimes. Just like how you should always be able to come home at the end of the day to find peace and quiet, or how your loved ones will always have your back even and especially if you fail, towns in Zelda are there to give security in a harsh, uncertain world. At the same time, they show the player what they're fighting for. Like Jacob Geller said, A world without joy and humor isn't a compelling world to fight for. Zelda games flourish in this twilight, the melding of light and dark, the disparate tones mutually empower each other. They're not just virtual locations, they're a reflection of your own life, either demonstrating how well you already have it, or giving you something to strive for. Having a place with a pleasant atmosphere that never ends, one that feels intimate and personal, with things, activities and people you care about. People living their ideal lives, doing the best they can to be there for each other. And you want to be there for them too, to be a part of their lives. And the best way you can achieve that, aside from saving the world of course, is to just go to these towns for a while and enjoy life. I've lost a good friend recently, someone I deeply cared for, someone who was a part of my community, someone who had a very positive impact on a lot of people, myself included, and someone who will be very dearly missed. Her passing made me realize just how important such a community is and how much I cared for the people in it, how grateful I am for them, how sad I was to see one of them gone never to return. So if you take anything away from this video, aside from the fact that Zelda games have very pleasant towns, it's that, much like the people living in them, you too can be part of a community. And if you are, and you do care about the others in it, then show your appreciation. Let them know how much you love them, that you're always there for them if they ever need any help. Life can be cruel, very specifically so. But no one needs to fight their battles alone. So as long as we have each other, it's not so bad, is it? Thank you.